hello everyone and welcome back to a new video uh, i wanted to bring you the deck list for uh, amon i don't like really playing him but uh, since he's all over the ladder i figured uh why not do a video about it actually this is the second time i'm recording the video because yesterday i i did the live matches but then i forgot to turn out the bots and actually like uh, every single tool i tried uh, doesn't let me cut the video so let's do all over again um anyway uh that's the deck it's like uh, just standard agro amon uh amon is pretty strong i think he's he deserves a nerf like uh, as you can see from the uh, three or four matches i did uh, we, we, which we will see later uh like the problem is the first strike but apart from that uh, uh, the carpool for Crustodes is really really strong so let's let's go through the deck uh kaizu lane is nice value generator uh, i like uh, kaizu lane in this type of decks uh, and with this kind of warlord i want to be really aggressive also we kind of struggle with the card generation and uh, card draw uh since we are custodes and custodes uh, have sentinels so i think uh, kaizulane helps help us mitigate that um similar role uh, actually is filled by strategos and uh, sork um which are basically card generators it's not really uh any other particular thing or synergy about strategos or sork but i think that these are pretty good uh, then we have Command Bridge, since uh, uh, Custodes have great tactics, I, th I think uh, Command Bridge is an auto-include. Uh, we have Gear Falcons, uh, I think this card is great. Uh, nice cheap flanker, uh, deals with, with stealth, deals with recognition. Um, <coughs> I, just, I just think it's a, a, really, a really good card. Uh, Malkiel sometimes let us uh, snowball the game. Uh, we can play um, Eteron Ward in turn two. Um, it's just a really solid uh, legendary to play early. Uh, Rothrian Conster, I think since the change, this card is pretty good. Um, can deal a lot of damage. Uh, I think with Amon is way better than with uh, other warlords. Uh, still, it's a pretty nice card. Uh, Agamatus Jet Vice is an out include. Crucial Choice, I really like Crucial Choice in this kind of decks that want to be really aggressive and smack face pretty often. Uh, sometimes it can give us uh, really great value. Um, and uh, apart from that, like sometimes it can give you um, maybe things that can save your ass like uh, Avatar of the Four. So I think it's worth including it. Uh, we have Imperium's Law, it's the best draw engine in the game, so you have to play this card, two of in every single Custodes deck, like Jet Bikes, like Ganestus Venatari, which is an also a great card, and I think two of these goes in every single Custodes deck, no matter what you play. Uh, we have Incarnate Purpose, a lot of damage, uh, sometimes Amon can be up to 5 attack, you can deal 10 damage with for 3 energy, it's, it's just great. Um, well, actually, five damage for three energy, but that's the, the the point is that you can deal a lot of damage with uh, incarnate purpose. If you can get uh, something spicy out of crucial choice, this can only go higher. Uh, at Ward warden, I think it's a nice frontline that needs to be addressed. Uh, otherwise, it can be pre pretty problematic to take out. Uh, I really like this card. Um, Pro console Caligus. Uh, I think it's amazing in Amon, like there is no reason why not to play two of these. Uh, Amon goes up to four attack just for playing this card, so I think uh, uh, it's a great um, it's a great tool. Uh, then we have Ancient Pardon, uh, this card is disgustingly overpowered, so uh, no reason not to run this. Um, Ares Gunship uh, is just straight up burst five damage sometimes save your ass and uh, help help us reach lethal auric master for card generation and uh, like keep the steam going a little bit longer uh, you can play the secondary master instead of call of cordis if you want call of cordis is just uh, anti horde uh, tech uh, like for this defenders of caliban you can fish it with command bridge i think it's pretty good and then we have far pike terminators as a um, 
uh, like uh, big fat uh, six drop I wouldn't like in this kind of deck I wouldn't bother with uh, uh, more uh, um, high costed uh, custodes this this deck really wants to close the game early also to be fair I have to say I don't have any of the legendaries I miss the four energy uh, the um, Natadian I think it's called I miss the Darien status and I miss uh, the 8 energy one I just picked up uh, Heracle Kalaxor uh, Heracle Kalaxor uh, I, I really don't want to, ch to change the deck just yet but I think it can be included Emperor's Host of course can be included the problem is that I don't have that many good custodes like maybe if I play the more mid-range version with Aquilon Guard um, Cleomens Wardens maybe um, and the 8 energy legendary like maybe it can work in this, ki in this kind of way but uh, otherwise I think uh, enemy Emperor's host is generally way better than mine so uh, I will lose out on, on value and I think it's uh, not worth including it right now like I prefer to have a little bit more steam and burst early on uh, try to close the game early if it works uh, okay if it doesn't um, uh, what, what, can, what can we say? Uh, we're playing Agro for a reason. Um, let's go into the battle log. So uh, the first one was against our fellow uh, Masters of, uh, of Salt, I think. Um, um, so in this case, we ditched one Gear Falcon. We, we have one which is okay, and then we have Auric Master. This can give us jet bikes. It's pretty good. Um, Rothian Constar is actually amazing. I think Dupain really struggles with taking this out. Call is not great, but we can make it work. Okay. Um, so Dupain plays a lot of big stuff, which sometimes can be problematic. But uh, like the point is that I'm on a, I think has so much free trades uh, that it's actually really hard for Dupain to kill him. So in this case, he has to uh, either uh, like don't play anything or just. Uh, um, yeah ignore it the problem is that he's going to take six damage uh also like the only way dupain has to kill this is the two two uh three energy two two that deals two damage and the smack um so in this case we take this out smack for six then he has to take this out for sure like it's not even an option because if he takes six more damage he's kind of dead and then we have a refill for our Rick Master, uh, so uh, we're not in the in a bad shape at all. So Auric Master in this case is a bit of a tempo loss, uh, but we have 12 damage in hand, so uh, we just need to keep the game going a little bit longer, and also there is a 12 health difference. Um, Dankanato Ancient is never going to trigger unless he plays the, um, the big uh, guy, the uh, Grimwald. And at this point we can just clear with Call, leave a jet bike on the board. Next time, uh, uh, next turn we have uh, a lot of stuff we can play. Um, and actually in this way we regain tempo that we lost playing Oric Master. Um, so we kind of break even, and now for uh, Iron of Mithridates and Duncan, Duncan Atoy Ancient we are actually golden. Uh, Tarantula is okay, but like we are pretty, uh, uh, like how our health is pretty good, so we, I, I thought since we have an damage in hand, we just ignore it and go face. Like he has to take this out anyway. So at this point he's fishing on the tarantula roll. Venatari is a great uh, draw. Actually we can play it, uh, remove one of these and uh, play the um, uh, Iron Mithridates. I picked the Constor, I actually uh, debated quite a bit on what to pick, but I think a cheap Nemesis trigger is better than uh, um, Terminator, since I already have a decent 6-drop. Um, 
and um, I don't think I really need the front line right now. And at this point, he really needs to take out the Iron Mitridates, but uh, unfortunately, uh, his Tarantula decided otherwise, so uh, he just dies to Archmanship and uh, attack from uh, Iron Mitridates. Like, the point is, even if you remove that, uh, we had 9 damage with uh, Caligus and uh, Ares Gunship. Um, so it's very hard, like we have an insane amount of burst uh, at the end of the day. Um, uh, then we have uh, one against Sanax. Uh, I think Sanax is pretty interesting, but I would like to play him, but I still miss the two kill legendaries. So at this point we have Conster, which is pretty good, we have uh, Gear Falcon for uh, uh, Precognition, since I think also um, Sanax uh, lately wants to play a little bit more with uh, like Call of the Tutelary in this kind of cards, so I think in this case Precognition is pretty useful. Like, right now the situation is pretty even. I think I have the advantage just because of the first strike. Um, we can drop Sork. Can give, can give us some pretty useful cards. Um, then we have... Uh, okay, we, uh, we need to deal now with Blade on Curve, which is pretty annoying. Uh, the point is that he is really not playing a lot of troops, so... so Okay, in this case, pick the less bad option, but they're yeah, actually very bad. Uh, here we pick bl by Blade. There was an argument to be made also for uh, um, Blade and Carmine, but I think by Blade is just straight up better with uh, Bloodthirst. So, and also let's let's us uh, uh, have a higher reach with uh, with his first strike. So at this point we can remove the precognition with the uh, Gear Falcons and then we can play Rotten Conster, proc the Nemesis and now we can take out uh, uh, a 5 energy uh, guy with just uh, a 2-3 two, a basically and take no damage and we actually fish Malkiel out of Sork, we can play that. Now like e either he clears this or he's pretty dead. Because I also have a lot of burst in hand. The Rotherham console surviving here is pretty, pretty good from, like, uh, pretty lucky from my part. Um, now I think we just play at our own Warden and Imperium's Law. That's not bad. Uh, we just, just keep attacking because I think uh, um, we have an higher uh, burst potential than Sanaxa. And uh, also, like, Sanaxa likes to bash a lot, uh, um, so we need to keep his health as low as possible. So now uh, we have to call the L2, play the jet bikes, take up the Sam Squad with the jet bikes and smack this. Uh, this can't attack. Uh, the point is that uh, we can pick also the second RS gunship. We are like we have ten damage in hand. He's at fifteen. So uh, and now he has to deal with a four eight with front line, which is not easy at all. Like he, this is becomes pretty big. Like now it's almost uh, demands a full turn just to take this out. Okay, this is pretty scary. And now uh, we have Lethal with uh, Ares and Incarnate Purpose. Like the killing range Amon has is just ridiculous. If we had uh, 5 more energy it would be even more rich. And if we had the time to play the Byblade, um, I mean... Just a uh, like crucial choice is really good because it can give you these kind of cards which are just amazing. 
Um, then let's see one against uh, Varl and one against Kenspawn. I would argue that these are all uh, good matches for Amon. Uh, the most uh, troublesome, I think, are Valdor, um, Lord of the Flies, I think. I, I have a pretty good with, with rate with uh, Lord of the Flies against Amon, I have to say. Uh, like just because it struggles to deal with four health uh, stuff uh, put really early on. And also, like, uh, the problem is that Lord of the Flies uh, uh, can actually, uh, like, if you, uh, I don't know, take out drones with these, uh, uh, with, with troops, like, he can let them live to make them die to poison. And when they die to poison, um, you don't draw cards. So that's the big point, I think, with... Uh, uh, Lord of the Flies. So at this point we take this out. Uh, don't want to, br to burn the counterattack just yet. This is better because like now Varl has to decide if smack this uh, or fish uh, for the one damage to go there. And of course he gets it. Uh, now we have Imperium's Law, uh, next turn we have Flanker or Frontliner, depending on what we need. And we also have Paradon, which is uh, pretty amazing. Okay. Uh, we have the perfect way to take this out. I mean, Venatari into uh, Torfin is like the best uh, kind of trade for him, so... And then next turn we can go for frontliners or we can go for auric master. I think frontliners because we don't want to lose tempo that much. I mean, space walls have the problem that, uh, uh, like the the problem space walls are against custodes is that space walls hardly have something going for them against custodes. The problem is also that puni like punitive strike. Uh, against Amon is just so bad because you can just, uh, if it, this survives, you can just bash it for free, like take no damage. Um, okay, he got lucky, he got the, the flanking guy. Um, and still not a bad pull at all. I never managed to get this kind of pulls out of that card. Um, now we can clear, which is pretty interesting, like we can incarnate purpose and counter attack. Uh, we came back a little bit of tempo, I don't want Michael to die just yet. <coughs> Especially since next turn we have at 8 energy with Malkiel, and actually with Auric Master with, an, with 8 energy we can play also the thing we, we generate, so... Unfortunately, if this goes... Uh, yeah, on the Malkiel, Malkiel is dead. Never lucky. Um, so now I think the play is Kotstorf. Nemesis trigger, take this out, and then we can play Auric Master and let's see what it gives us. Okay. That's not a great pull, to be honest. Like, this is never going to trigger Nemesis. This is never going to trigger Nemesis. This is not bad for 3 energy. Uh, also, uh, I still have bikes from the beginning of the game, but it's just for this kind of situation, when you have these cards that are all 4 attack cards, um, that you actually need to take out. And now we have a very strong turn. Uh, we can go Jet Bikes, Pallas and Gear Falcons, take everything out and have the full board. Like the stupid thing about first strike uh, is this one. Like you can bash this uh, with the uh, <laughs> with the bikes, take no damage, and uh, you still have a two three. Like now there is no way he's going to deal thirteen damage to me. I think. And we can start to bash in. 
like we have 10 14 and unfortunately we don't have lethal and he has nothing to proc uh, uh, nemesis with but we can put a frontliner and just put everything in yeah and then we have the last uh, matches we did yesterday um, which is against spawn I think one warden is enough Malkiel is great at first hand um, counter attack let us take out one spawn for free which we are going to do just now and then we have uh, uh, turn 2 at Ron Warden uh, we can have uh, turn 3 culture choice maybe play something else so this end is looking pretty good I also think that chaos in general struggles with taking out uh, uh, big health stuff early on and like they I think it's pretty hard to take out a far pack terminators for chaos spawn and we also draw auric master just a great card like it's really really strong so at this point we keep bashing face because like uh, we like uh, the problem with cow spawn is that it has little health pool so if we can manage to take take her long enough as you can uh, as you saw before we have a pretty high killing range so um i think it's worth it to take some uh, like even trades in order to take his health down enough at this point we could just go for master i think it's the best play and we keep bashing face we leave him with malkiel which is not great and unfortunately gear falcon doesn't remove duplicitous but uh, um we can manage to do some pretty neat stuff uh, like uh, um, pretty soon like Azrubal I think is not that uh, um, easy to deal with uh, Gallimedan is definitely not easy to deal with uh, now we can just uh, uh, take this out in order for uh, the Azrubal to be a little bit more uh, safe like otherwise it just gets taken out by spawning out attack uh, okay Tisha such a strong card so now we have the um, a couple of ways to do that we can play double jet bikes we can play incarnate purpose and one jet bike and we can take out basically everything and deal for damage to him i decided to go with double jet bikes just for a reason is that like uh, uh, if he doesn't have the quelling of hope like it's not easy to take out two jet bikes and i want some pressure for next turn uh seeing as we have a fire pike into uh Gallimedan or another fire pike just uh, i think it's a pretty neat uh, um um combination <coughs> okay so at this point we just want to go with pi fire pike terminators i think we could also go with constor plus uh, incarnate purpose but i think uh, just having uh, the terminators is better and now the uh, Bloodmaster just wants to crash into the Terminators. Oh, also another way, another uh, thing uh, uh, for why Lord of the Flies is great is that Plague Drones don't proc Nemesis ever, so um, it's a pretty neat uh, uh, thing. I think we, ju we just go with Kalimedan right now and keep bashing face. We have uh, uh, 8 damage with Constor plus Incarnate Purpose. Okay. So now the situation becomes pretty scary. Uh, he took out my uh, Frontliner. He's at 9, but I still miss uh, uh, 1 damage, which I'm not going to find. Um, so what, what we're going to do instead is just go to choice and we get pretty lucky we got Prospering Inspire Guard this puts a 3-5 into play which is not bad uh, at this point we can just free trade on the drone um, the point is that uh, uh, like if he has a second boss fighter otherwise there is no way he's taking this out uh, yeah he just uh, surrenders 
um, also to clarify, since I didn't talk about it before, uh, the win rate for this deck is, uh, um, I think, 73 or 74%. Let me check. Uh, it's 70, almost 75%. If I have to be honest, I had a pretty huge loss, loss streak with this deck. Otherwise, I think it would be a couple of... Uh, um, like a little bit higher, like 70, I think it was uh, when I started playing Amon, 76%, then uh, um, when I went to 73, 74, uh, and with the wins I made yesterday, we are back to almost 75. Uh, I think uh, 75 is a really solid win rate. Um, anyway, uh, let's go to the collection and see what cards we can also include uh, in uh, um, Amon. I think um, we can. Uh, Con Chosen Warrior is not a bad card, but I th with the latest iteration, I kind of took this out. Uh, we have. But Nathaniel Tycor for sure. We have uh, uh, Darren and Status for sure. We have um, Eracal Caraxor, you can make it work. If you want to play more, more mid range, which is a different kind of deck, we can, you can go with Aquilon Guard. And you can go with uh, uh, Taranatoi, which is a great card. Emperor's Host, for sure. Um, it's a little bit different as a deck, but I think it has legs. Maybe it is even better, but with the Carbul I have, I think uh, Agro is what best suits me. Um, also because I like, uh, I, I'm, I'm generally a mid range jungle player, but I, I really like Agro when I can play it. So. Um, also faster games, uh, usually people don't expect uh, uh, pure aggro, so um, you can catch people uh, out of guard pretty often. Uh, apart from that, I think with, uh, uh, with the Custodes pool we are just okay. Uh, let's see in the neutrals, uh, you can go with uh, Argus Light for sure, just need cards. I think we have enough uh, uh, card, gener like card draw, uh, but you can play that, not bad. Um, if you uh, encounter a lot of war, uh, a lot of burst, greatest duty and listening determination are actually not that bad, I think. Uh, um, you can also play. Let's see. Uh, Fidesz Dravian for sure. Like I would take if if I had this, I would I would take out one fire pack terminators for this for sure, like one hundred percent. This card is really good. Uh, then out of Mechanicum, let's see if there is something useful. Uh, we can play Castiel, we have a pretty uh, good amount of vehicles that we want to draw, especially the bikes. So I think Castiel is not that bad. Also our 5 drop is... Uh, yeah, it's not great, so we can put Castiel in. I think it's a neat card. Um, apart from Castiel, I don't really think there is anything worth uh, including if you forbidden protocols would still give uh, buffs like you used to do uh, like bloodthirst and so on I would 100% include forbidden protocols in that <coughs> in the deck because uh, like if you get like a plus, plus two plus, plus one plus two and ward on a, on a bike like it becomes impossible to take it out to take it out so I think in that particular case, the Forbidden Protocols is not bad. If you still can get Bloodthirst, is uh, I think this card would be so much more played than like nobody play, plays Forbidden Protocols anymore. Um, <coughs> out of Chaos, Tony and Arbus is not bad, but I think Arbus Slider is better in this kind of decks. Uh, you can also play. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Well, before I actually played Bloodmaster, it's amazing. The problem is that the Ancient Paradon just fucks you up. If you play Bloodmaster and you go second against another Amon and they play, and they play Paradon, you just lost the game. So I just they took this out. But for Agro, it's a very good card. And those Amon can play really good even with low energy, which is the reason why Bloodmaster is so strong on him. Like, I, I, if uh, it wasn't for the OP fucking Paradon, I would 100% play Blood Master again. Um, then we can have a little bit more Burst, actually, Warp Assault. Uh, we can have uh, Planetary Purge, for sure. We can have Con Favor, which I still don't have. 
I think our favor is not that bad. Like we can uh, reach really high killing potential, I think. But like the problem is that uh, our uh, three energy card is basically con favor, but better. So yeah, I don't know even about con favor. Like it's not bad. Um, <coughs> then uh, we can run Tisha, but we, I think we have enough flankers. Like just in my deck, we have six flankers. If you have the, the five energy legendary, you have uh, seven flankers. So I think it's more than fine. Um, and then I think we are done, even with a neutral carpool. Um, so ever, uh, like overall, I think they deserve some nerfs. Surely the ancient paradon, maybe the jet bikes, uh, and maybe Imperium Slow because this card is, I don't know, it's busted. Like there is no other way to put it. Uh, like uh, uh, gathering intelligence, neutral cards, cost one energy more, doesn't give any uh, discount or buff to the thing it draws. Like it, it's not even close, like ma uh, at all, like. There is also no point in playing the gathering intelligence for custodes since you have this card. Like this card should cost four. That's the the point. Um, um, also, discounting tactics is just generally really really good. Um, yeah. So this was the deck. Uh, I think it's uh, pretty easy to play. Like it's not uh, uh, rocket science. Um, but it can be, be pretty good in the in the ladder. Like uh, I almost never play. If I play Yamo, it's just because uh, I'm tired of running into him, and just, uh, like at, at this point, I just want to play him. Um, but uh, apart from that, I think uh, is an easy 70% win rate with him. If you have the legendaries, like mind, I have 75 with uh, almost no legendaries for Custodes. Like if you want, uh, you can reach easily, I think, the, uh, the 80%, like really easily. Like if you have the three legendaries, the three good legendaries, which are the four energy, five energy, and eight energy one, and you build a deck with them, I think it's easy to go uh, up to 80% uh, for sure. Maybe even higher. Like I think is just as strong as an act last season. So um, yeah, let me know what you think. If you like the video, I'm sorry that I, uh, I uh, like I had to uh, record it again uh, since I, I would have preferred the live matches system. Um, but uh, yeah, this time goes this way. Let's, next time, I hope uh, I turn out, uh, turn off the bots before playing. <laughs> so uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe, and see you guys next time.